Alex here from Black Sheep IT Consulting. So if you haven't been living under a rock for the last year or so, you have heard about the hype and rise of generative AI. Uh, first and foremost, the famous ChatGPT, and then quickly followed by other large language models. And Oracle has recently made their generative AI service on Oracle Cloud generally available. So I thought it's a good time to check it out and of course play around with it inside Siebel CRM. So as the Oracle website informs us, uh, there are several models available from Cohere, which was announced initially as the partner and also for Meta's Llama 2. So that's interesting. To be able to experience Oracle's generative AI, you need, of course, an OCI tenancy. Uh, currently, the service is available only in the Chicago region, so you must subscribe to that region and replicate your user accounts to that region. And then you can start going to Analytics and AI, and you will find Generative AI as one of the services here. So I've opened that already. And there's not nothing much you can do apart from, of course, following the links to documentation and go to the playground, uh, which allows you to play around with the pre-trained models, most notably the Cohere and the Meta Llama models. So you can see that there are three categories of using the generative AI in, in Oracle, which is text generation, text summarization, and creating so-called embeddings. So of course, the most famous use case is the generation of text. So let's just pick this one and choose an example, uh, generate a product pitch. So it says generate a product pitch for USB connected microphone and Let's generate that. So it creates the output. And yeah, that's quite a lot of output here. And of course, it's the quality you would expect from a large language model that has been trained on general data. If you want to train it on your data or fine tune the model, then you can create custom models, uh, but we will not go into that detail. On the right, you see parameters. So each request you can outfit with uh, parameters. For example, the temperature, which is uh, 0.5 here. So let's turn it up. The temperature is actually the randomness and also the risk of hallucination that you get. So the higher the temperature, the higher the amount of things that the LLM just makes up and hallucinates, which is a common problem. But let's check it out with a, let's say, temperature of 1.2. Let's see what that changes here. And still looks quite the same. Can't really make out much different here. Uh, you can also play around with uh, the P and K values. Uh, stop sequences, there's a frequency penalties. So all this is, of course, explained in the pop-ups and also it's explained in depth in the documentation. So what's very cool here is not only can you play around, of course, with your text or with the examples, uh, you can also press a few code button. And currently, maybe this will be <laughs> increased later, uh, there are two languages available, Java and Python. So the Java code is really something you can take uh, if you have the SDK and put it in, in your own Java code. Of course, you have to amend it a little bit with the uh, configuration files for authentication, but then you get a real, a real code example using the input you have used uh, to make that request in using the Java SDK. Uh, that is, of course, required. Uh, same is true for Python, where you have the SDK for Python and you see how the request is built and sent off. And then of course it prints the response data. So that's all a very nice playground to get you started to experiment with that. 
So for my next experiment, I'm going to use text summarization. And I'm not going to use any of these examples, but I'm going to paste uh, JSON data, which you can identify as data from the opportunity uh, business component. Actually, I grabbed the record set in OpenUI. So stay tuned. And that is one record with uh, opportunity data. So it's basically an opportunity record in JSON. And I'm just pasting that here in the raw JSON code to see what, what does the model do with that when I click summarize. And well, the output is quite impressive. So it has identified the data fields, the date fields, and it's giving me a good summary uh, of that. So the summarization works pretty well. And one thing you can do with that is actually to increase the length. So you want a longer text or you want paragraphs or bullets uh, and you want to have a high extractiveness. So, and then you can place an additional command. So here I've used that additional command, which is a text you can add for conversational style, etc. And I told it to start with an executive summary. Then uh, I told it to be precise. And I told it to add a numbered list of at three, at least three next action steps. So that is just some text you can add. And I've clicked summarize already. So let's just click it one more time. And now it uses these additional commands to make the output more like my desired style. So here's the executive summary and here are three next steps that it devises from the data. So you see it's pretty well versed about opportunities and the sales process and it also asks uh, things about the JSON data so I could ask it to not uh, include any of that but that's already something I can see as a potential use case for Siebel CRM so give me an executive summary of a, a given record that I select and give me a list of next steps that I should uh, consider and there's no stopping there be, being all business-like <laughs> if you want to be really funny. Uh, well, tell it to write in the style of somebody. So here I used uh, Scooby-Doo and it starts yeah, using that style of that cartoon series, uh, Weather Mystery and so forth. Of course, this is not really a business scenario, but you can see what the model is capable of. So, and here we are finally in uh, Siebel CRM. So I'm in the opportunity list. And what I did was uh, create some JavaScript. I will just briefly explain later that grabs the selected record in the format that, that is in the presentation model. So the JSON, and I pass it on to a request to the generative AI service. And I just pop up the output in a dialog. And I'm using the description field to allow me to add that additional text. So I tell it to start with a summary, provide a numbered list, and add at least five emojis to illustrate the data for that given opportunity. So let's press the button and see what happens. Okay, so that was real time and we get the summary and we get our emojis and we get uh, five steps uh, that we can execute on this opportunity. So of course, this is just a start and uh, we flesh it out a little bit. And so it's perfectly feasible. And this is all I really want to provide here, a feasibility uh, study that you can perfectly find sent data from Siebel to OCI and have the generative AI service summarize your data or uh, generate, of course, data given on your input. Um, so the use cases are plenty. 
uh, make sure to hit the comments and to tell us about your use cases. And uh, stay tuned if you wish for a quick look at the uh, JavaScript code. So I'm not explaining the whole code. Uh, you might want to watch my initial OCI AI series. The links are in the description. And I've added to the code basically the uh, condition for opportunities. So as you can see here, get the description. If the description starts with AI colon, I'm extracting the description and generate the payload for the request. So that's a function there that takes the stringified record and the description. And then I have my generic function to invoke OCI AI via the REST API of OCI. That's all discussed in the previous videos that you can find in the description. So let's check out that payload function. How does a payload look like? And this is the payload for the text summarization. So you need an input, you have your compartment ID, you have the serving mode, you specify your model, and you have these parameters here that we have seen as well in the playground. And here's the additional command passed in. And so when the function returns the response, I'm just rendering it as a dialog. So let's see it one more time, this time with uh, at least three paragraphs and praise the achievements of the sale teams with utmost flamboyancy, just to end this on a funny bone. Let's see what this gets us here. And there we go. Yes, that sounds very flamboyant and praising. So that, of course, just is here to illustrate the capabilities of the large language models provided by Oracle on the generative AI services. Thanks much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.